Hi, third graders. Thank you for joining me for our school counseling lesson this week, if you're able to. And if you weren't, here is a recording of the lesson that we um, had. We quickly read the book, The Cow Who Climbed a Tree, which is a fantastic book, basically about goal setting, believing in yourself and reaching for goals that are important to you. Um, I'll read it quickly. And then we have um, some discussion about how do you set goals and what are realistic goals and what are goals that are meaningful to you. The cow who climbed a tree. Um, Tina was a very curious cow. She had a thirst for discovery. Who doesn't love cows, right? They're just fun, fun and whimsical and funky. Her mind was full of wonderful things, all of which her sisters found silly. Impossible, ridiculous, nonsense, they would say every time she told them her amazing ideas. Her sisters were only interested in one thing, fresh and juicy grass. Have you ever felt like that where you had so many ideas and maybe people didn't listen? People were too busy? Or they just didn't get it yet? One day when Tina was exploring the woods, she decided to try something new. And there's a growth mindset, trying something new. She began to climb a tree. Up and up she went. She didn't even know that she could, but she didn't know she couldn't. Her goal was, let's find out. When she got to the top, Tina couldn't believe her eyes. I don't think I would believe my eyes either. Um, she saw a dragon, but unlike the fierce dragons she had seen in books, this one was very friendly and vegetarian. All afternoon they talked about wonderful dreams and incredible stories. Tina couldn't wait to tell her sisters about her new friend. You know why Tina's happy that the dragon's a vegetarian, right? The dragon's not going to eat Tina. But her sisters were not impressed. Dragons don't exist. Cows can't climb trees. Impossible, ridiculous, nonsense, they said. And with that, they went to bed. I don't see them as having a growth mindset. I see them as not thinking outside their reality, not being open to new ideas and new goals and new dreams. But let's see what happens because people and cows can change. But the next morning, Tina was nowhere to be seen. Her sisters found a note. Gone flying with the dragon of the woods, Tina. Well, that was it. Tina's nonsense had gone too far. The sisters decided to go and find her and bring her home. For the very first time, they ventured beyond the farm and into the woods. They had never imagined it would be so beautiful. The page is sticking. And when they came across something very strange, <laughs> they stared in disbelief. Impossible, they said. Can you see who or what is climbing the tree? <laughs> A pig. But this first sister began to climb, and one after another, up they went. I guess they wanted to climb a tree too. The world beyond the fields was extraordinary. But where was Tina? Suddenly the sisters looked up. And I didn't see this coming when I first read the book. I love was surprised she had climbed, but now it was impossible. It was ridiculous. It was nonsense, but it was true. Tina was flying. And when she asked her sisters to join her, they said something they had never said before. 
Yes, why not? But taking risks and believing and knowing that you can try and fail and it's okay. After that, they just couldn't wait to see what else was possible. Can you see the next step in their adventure? Why not? Why not space travel? So I love the story about goals and dreams. Why not try to climb? Why not try to fly? Why not try outer space travel? But it's important to know what goals are important to you and then set steps towards reaching them. Because a goal without a plan, to me, is just a wish. So I'm going to screen share, as I often try to do, and we are going to talk about setting goals. Just for some of you, this is going to be really advanced stuff like, whoa, Mrs. Taylor, wait, you're hurting my brain. But I figure you know the best way to grow a brain and to make it stronger is to challenge it. So if you find any of this challenging today, that's awesome. You are growing your brain. So quickly about setting goals. I always have goals in my life. Some of them I get. I have a plan. I know what I'm doing. Other goals are more like wishes. I don't really have a set plan. I don't really make myself accountable or keep track of it or recognize my success. So here's what I do too to help me be successful with my goals. First, imagine you want to achieve something. What is it you want to accomplish this year? I know in our virtual learning, it can be really tough. Decide, do you really want to work on your ELA, something in math, something in science or social studies? What is a school goal? Or it can be a personal goal. This little boy's goal is, I'm going to climb that mountain. But some goals we make are better than others. And when I first read this, I thought, I'm not sure if I agree with that, but then I see what they mean. The little girl in green says, I want to learn how to ice skate. While the boy says, I want to jump over the moon. The little girl's goal, it's practical, it's something doable. The little boy's goal might not be the best. So today we're gonna help him and us learn about setting goals. SMART goal is just an acronym, which means the first letters, um, of the words spell the word smart. We'll talk about specific first. A smart goal is specific. It means you know exactly what you will want to, comp to accomplish. You know what you want to be able to do. Simple enough, it seems. Like I want to learn how to ride my bike without training wheels. That might be a goal for a little one. As a as I'm a fourth, third grader, third grader, what might a goal be for you? Specific goals are important because they give you focus. Let's see what hap what's happened when the goal isn't specific. In this example, Andrew's mom went, um, went with his mom, Andrew went with his mom to the grocery store and he asked his mom if he could help. And she told him to go get some fruit. Well, he wasn't sure what kind of fruit to get. Click on what you think he should pick. Do you know what mom, what fruit mom wants? Do you have any idea? We can start guessing. Maybe she wants oranges. Huh? Well, maybe she wants apples. Well, I don't know, maybe she wants grapes. We don't know because mom wasn't specific. Okay. Now, if we kept guessing, we'd finally guess this, but that's just because we ran out of options. It took a long time for us to guess that pair because it wasn't a specific goal. So the little boy says, mom, mom, you need to be more specific. What exactly do you want me to get? And mom says, okay, will you get me three pairs? Now, can you figure out what the goal is? Yeah, you got it, three pairs. She was specific in what she wanted him to get. It was easier to follow 
the directions or what she wanted. The opposite of specific, like three pairs, is vague. Something vague is hard to achieve because you're not really sure what it means or what it looks like when you get it. So the one on the left, I will be a better student. Well, do you mean better with attendance? Do you mean better with your test grades? Do you mean better at completing your homework or studying or study habits? I don't know, do you? Versus the one on the right, I will get 90% on my math test. That is very specific. We know the subject and we know how or what grade you want to achieve. Okay, so vague or specific. Now, making specific goals takes practice. I know I still struggle sometimes when I'm making my goals for my school counseling program here at STAR. Well, let's look at Jenny's goal. Right now, it's too vague. I will be, I will read better. Well, I don't know exactly what that means. I mean, I'm glad she has the dream and the goal. She wants to be better at her reading, but how can we help her be more specific in ways to be a better reader? Well, one way, she could read just for 20 minutes every day. That is a step, that is a goal that will help her become a better reader. The goal, I will be a good brother to my sister. Pretty vague. But what about this, the middle one? I will play a game with my sister every week. Wow, that's specific. It tells you what he's going to do and when he's going to do it. Versus the other ones on the left, it's best brother and the right is all have fun. The middle one is definitely more specific. The second thing, part of the acronym was M, and M means measurable. Once you have your goal, you want to know if you've reached it or not, and the only way to know if you've reached it, if, it, if it's measurable. Is there a number attached? Is there a certain amount? Measurable helps you know that you've achieved your goal when you're done. If you were making a cake, now this sounds like Mrs. Taylor, but the recipe didn't say how much sugar to put in. How would you know you were done adding sugar? Hmm, I guess I'll just keep putting more in. Now imagine eating a cake with this much sugar. You, you might like it, some of you, but I don't think it would be the most tasty cake. Um, to make that cake better, you have to know how much um, to put in. The recipe says three cups. So it's measurable, she can measure that sugar. She knows how much. Now I know I'm done. Measuring is also good when you set goals so you can try to get there um, and know how we're doing getting there in the process. So this person wants to run um, a race in two minutes. Okay, we've got a good goal. Well, let's see if we're getting closer to the goal. The first time you run, you do it in four minutes. All right, we're getting there, not there yet, but getting there. Second time you run, ooh, you did it in three minutes. You're getting closer to your goal. On the third try, do you see that? The goal was reached two minutes. So having that number also lets you know, hey, am I getting closer to reaching my goal? Reading. These are some ways, if you're thinking, I would like Mrs. Taylor to get better at my reading, here's how you could find out if you are actually making those improvements. You can measure and see how many words you're reading per minute. That's fluency. If your fluency goes up, your reading progress is improving. What about how many minutes you read per day? Just like anything, the more you practice and practice it well, the better you're going to get. So if you are reading every day for a certain amount of time, you are going to become a better reader. And third, how many comprehension questions you get right. So when you're taking a reading assessment, hmm, am I getting more answers correct each time? That must mean I'm becoming a better or stronger reader. Some quick examples. If you want to get better at soccer, what would be a measurable um, goal? 
Yeah, how many goals you achieve. If you wanted to get better at math, you can measure it by how fast you do your math facts. If you want to get better at reading, you could say, hmm, I can measure how many words I read per minute. Piano, how many minutes you practice playing a day. Because the more time you practice, the better you get. And being respectful. You can measure that simply by how many times you raise your hand instead of talking out. So all those things, almost every goal you set, we want it to be measurable. Help this little guy, I will get better at spelling. Well, maybe he can get nine out of 10 words right. That's measurable. This little girl wants to get better at dance. Well, she could get better at dance. She'll know she's going to get better or good if she has chosen this last one to be um, to dance a solo. That's gonna tell her, wow, you did get better. You earned that privilege. The third step is the action plan. So you know what you want to achieve. You know how you're going to measure it. Now what are you going to do? How are you going to reach that goal? The fancy term is action plan, but sometimes you just call it a plan. You got to have a plan. Clara's goal was to make it to her talent show at the end of the year. She wanted to do, do ballet for the talent show so badly, but um, all year she waited for the talent show. She would daydream about what it would be like dancing on stage. And sometimes she would put on a new outfit and stare in the mirror, imagining winning the talent show. But when the time came to audition for the talent show, she didn't make it. She was sad she hadn't reached her goal. Why do you think she didn't reach her goal? <laughs> I bet you guessed it. Yeah, she didn't have an action plan. She didn't take steps to becoming a better dancer. She just wished for it and dreamed of it, but she didn't actually do anything to get better. A goal without a plan just won't work. So there's your goal sitting on top and your plan is what helps you reach those goals. So what Claire could have done if she wanted to be a better dancer is she could have signed up for ballet classes. Yeah, because when you practice and get better, you're going to become a better ballerina. And practice. Practice for 20 minutes a day, practice that routine, and you're going to become better. The next year, yay, go Clara, go Clara. She had the same goal, but this time she had a plan. She was going to sign up for ballet classes and practice her dance routine every day. It was hard. I know, sometimes putting a plan into action is tough. Sometimes she had to practice her dance instead of doing other things she wanted to do, but it was worth it because she got to the talent show and danced beautifully. Boys and girls, if there's something you really want to achieve, create your plan and then follow it. Do it. If it's important to you, it'll be worth it to you to put the work in. And now some brainstorming. Harry wants to be able to do 25 sit-ups. Well, the best thing he could do is practice sit-ups and record how many he does. Okay. Amber wants to get 90% on her math test. Which one will not work well? Well, just try really hard and hope I do my best. That's not really a plan. And then realistic. Make sure you ask, can I really do this? Make sure it's not impossible. Like I would love to be a lot taller, but that's not a realistic goal because I am what I, where I am and I've got to face that. The goal shouldn't be too easy. Like my goal is to jump over the stick. It shouldn't be too hard. Like my goal is to jump over that tree. Let's say you usually score 75% on a math test. It would be unrealistic to think I'm going to get 100% on every test. Oh, I've never met a perfect person. I'm guessing you're not a perfect person either. So why put that perfection out there on your plate? It'd be really hard to never miss any problems on a test. But a more realistic goal would be, okay, I'll try for 90% on four out of five tests. I'm gonna to try to get most of them right most of the time. 
words like always and never, they make goals difficult to reach because no one's perfect. Okay. So some of these are unrealistic. Like I will never miss a spelling word again. I will always be on time to class all year. I will earn a million dollars selling lemonade. I wish, probably not realistic. And I will be the fastest person in the country. You might be fast, but that's a pretty, pretty far goal. Um, but the rest seem to, oh, this one. This one, one kid said, I'm not sure Mrs. Taylor, but I will read 20 books a day. It's a little unrealistic. If you're going to read 20 books, I'm not sure if you're reading them well. Let's just say that for comprehension. And the last thing is timely. Make sure you have a deadline for your goals. Ask yourself, when will I reach my goal? So set a time, whether it's by the end of the school year, whether it's you know by the end of the week, by Friday, or by a certain time of the year, like I'll reach my goal by Christmas. And then if you meet your goal early, you can celebrate and start off on a new goal. So once again, make sure it's specific, you know what you want to achieve, that you can measure it, that you've got a plan that's realistic and doable, and that um, you can do it within a certain amount of time.